Hello. Uh, just real quick, starting off. Um, my name is Max7238. We're doing another uh, episode of Carrier Command. This should be the last tutorial episode that I film. Uh, there's probably going to be some cuts in here um, because uh, I'm probably going to be having to do quite a bit. And I think I'm just going to leave the recording running while I uh, I may even pop between uh, this save and making another one to demonstrate something else, uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm actually going to try and just do it all on this save. Um, I think we should be in a good enough position for that, uh, so we're going to give it a try. Um, but uh, this one should be wrapping up. We should take a three shield and a four shield island and attack the enemy carrier. Um, and I am actually going to go ahead and just try and kill them off uh, by the end of the video. Uh, I do want to still keep it uh, at least for the upload to an hour, um, so it may be some time before this actually goes up, uh, just because I need to actually have it upload and process and then have YouTube do the uh, editing. So we'll see. Um, once again, my dog's up here on the bed with me. He may hop up and uh, interrupt at some point. I'm not entirely sure. So, we're picking up pretty much right where we left off. I have the fleet out here hanging out uh, off the coast of magma, and I am going to start moving the carrier over toward Storm and Twilight. Uh, and I'm going to do that because we eventually want to get the carrier to, wow, head over to Thermopylae. They've been busy. Um, so, but that's going to be our general path, and uh, I'm probably not going to capture every island on the way. Ordinarily, I would, but just for the purposes of demonstration, uh, I think it's a good idea that we, you know, head down there as quickly as possible. So, that means it's a good idea for us to handle these islands as quickly as possible. So we're going to go ahead and get started right away. And uh, there's not going to be a whole lot of, you know, holding back this time. Uh, we, we really want to get things moving, and we want to make sure we've got some proper demonstrations. So that's the aim here. Now we're going to leave this albatross and the fleet here because we're going to do uh, something that my captain and I typically do when we've got a fleet, which is that albatross is going to use the fleet's resources to handle the island entirely on its own. Uh, we are not going to be seeing any ground game or any other air game aside from the four laser-guided missiles that that thing is carrying. <coughs> So we are going to be on heading here for quite some time. Um, I may actually even just leave weapons on. Yeah, there's barely any current, so it doesn't particularly matter. Um, I guess I'll move up to about, uh, say, like 80, 88, 87. Oh, we're already there. Good. Oh, yeah, it's just part of the uh, fluctuation. The carrier will attempt to maintain heading as best it can but hitting the maintain heading is not a catch-all. Um, you will periodically fluctuate on your heading because of waves and that sort of thing. So, uh, Albatross doesn't have a whole hell of a lot of fuel, so we gotta do this quickly. Now, we know that this is going to be an island that has some anti-air defenses. Oh, and turrets. Uh, make sure I put on the stabilization. So, for the moment, we don't need to know what these things are we need to know where they are. So you want to start pretty typically by identifying where the enemy is. Once you know where they are, then you can start doing scans. Once you've got full scans, then you can start prioritizing targets in general. Um, now, luckily for me, uh, this is a snowy island, so even though it's during the day, I'm still able to sort of pick out a couple things here and there. I could have sworn I just saw something moving in the trees, actually. Um, and uh, so while I'm doing this, I do also want to say I have been doing audio balancing uh, in between each video, and I haven't noticed a difference, but I've gotten a couple of people telling me on Discord that I'm still quiet. I don't know how that's possible. I started off with, you know, like my really, really old audio balancing stuff, and I just uh, did a test recording to make sure that the game audio wasn't overpowering me, uh, and then I just recorded. And then for the next video, because I'd been told I was quiet, I turned everything up uh, by roughly 
you know, 50%. Uh, so if it was at 100% before, it was at 150. Um, I was told I was too quiet again, so I went up to 200%. I have still been told I was too quiet, and so my voice right now is up to 400%, and I think the game is at 250. Um, and I'm, I'm not hearing a difference. Now, maybe that's because of my video player. Um, I'm using VLC. Maybe VLC automatically uh, balances some things during playback, and so I'm not actually able to get a proper audio balance test, um, but we'll see. So hopefully this works out. Uh, now, something that I want to point out here is not everybody has their headlights on, and that's because it's only just now starting to get to be nighttime. Um, units will sort of one after the other start turning on their lights. It doesn't, they don't all come on all at once. Uh, and the other thing that I want to point out is that we already know that this particular area has already spent its air units uh, because we were taking out the Navy last time. That was when I lost a member of the fleet. I just want to check on the carrier's progress before I head back in. Um, so, there we go. See, now we're getting headlights, so things are getting easier. Uh, it was easier to spot the turrets in the daylight, but now it's easier to spot these guys at night. So... Now, a lot of the ground units very much like to hide in the water. Um, and it can be very difficult to pick them out unless they're in deeper water where they will actually leave a trail, sort of like a torpedo leaves a trail. Um, another important thing is that if you're really in a hurry, if you see it's a bear, you can just stop scanning it. Uh, unless you intend on sending in ground units, it's not really important what the bear is carrying between the battle cannon and heavy cannon. They cannot carry the artillery cannon. AI cannot. Um, so it's between one of those two things, and the only threat to a bear on land is another bear. So unless you intend on going full ground game, it doesn't matter what the bear is carrying. Uh, and as we've said, we want carrier missiles, and we want 160 millimeter, which we've brought plenty of. So without any further question, we're just going to launch some shells at that guy. And look at how long that takes. So I'm pretty sure there were other headlights in there. I just couldn't get a proper bead on whatever else was in there. Uh, so, I've just kind of gone ahead and blasted the thing. This is probably what the typical player would do. Um, is, you know, prioritize getting 160 millimeter, and then doing something like that. Uh, more often than not, we will try and wait for a bigger, you know, uh, cluster of enemies to use the 160 millimeter. Oh, as you'll also notice, uh, you scan faster while zoomed in. Um, so we have an AA walrus, gun walrus. Walruses can carry 30 and 40 millimeter um, for their particular armaments. So unless we see missile, oh, yeah. So we have two more AA walrus. So we want to we want to kind of wait for them to group up. And uh, you'll have to excuse me because now I have to go take care of the dog one second. And I have to leave the recording going because otherwise I have to upload a completely separate video. And so, him being a jerk at this time of night, instead of just going to sleep like he should, is going to interrupt the recording. There we go. Okay. So, now I'm back. Okay. <laughs> okay, now I'm back. Um, so, let's have a look at that. Oh, different cluster of enemies. Are they up here? Yeah, they're up here. So we don't have to worry too much about the gun walrus right now. He's isolated, we can take him out with some of our, uh, other gunfire later. Okay, so we got them. Now, AI units, actually, uh, any AI-controlled unit, yours or the enemy, uh, they will slow down while they are... There we go. Uh, they will slow down while they're moving amongst the trees. That is a very good chance for you to take them out. Um, you especially want to fire on them if there are no cliffs in the way, and 
they are among the trees. Uh, the trees will not block uh, the majority of damage that they'll take because of the blast radius. Uh, but you can't fire through a solid cliff or a solid rock. So you do want to keep in mind the topography and make sure that you're not trying to shoot at something that's on the other side of a cliff face from the source of your damage. <laughs> the 160mm aims and fires as directly as possible. The artillery gun fires and tries to come down from above. So the artillery, d the artillery gun can't be blocked by terrain nearly as easily. But we don't have any ground artillery with us. We've only got the 160mm. So a missile seal, that's a good threat for a bear, uh, for any of your units really, which is why if you're going to deploy a ground convoy, you absolutely want to... Oh wow, both of them have missiles. That's interesting. So they're not going to be a threat to our air unit here. Um, and in fact, we can just kind of wait until later when we send the petrol in to deal with them. Uh, because we're going to want a petrol that uh, carries in our fire spots. So at this point, we've got every almost everybody scanned. And we are going to have to go and check on the carrier again here pretty shortly, because the carrier should be getting pretty close to our force shield island. The music hasn't changed, so we shouldn't have any naval units detected on radar, uh, which is another way that, you know, you can sort of listen in and listen for the music change um, for the ground game versus the uh, naval game. Okay, so the, the target's only got regular turrets on it, and we've been able to spot one other turret, a couple of bears, and some missile units. So as long as there's nothing else anti-air, we can pretty much just start using cruise missiles from the fleet. Yeah. So I don't see anything else like that necessarily. Let's go check on the carriers. Check on the carrier's progress. And would you look at that? We have a chance. To demonstrate countermeasures. And countermeasures not working out properly. <laughs> By the way, I immediately started turning in the wrong direction. Part of me is actually kind of happy that I did that because it means that the opposite side of the carrier took the hit. And I would prefer the left side take damage because the right side is going to be what's facing the island when we come around. There's the 160mm that they're opening up with. It's okay. I, I know what's going on. I don't need the alarm. Thank you. And this is why doing remote operations is a lot easier when you actually have friends with you. Uh, trying to do this stuff solo and, you know, monitor every situation at once can get pretty hairy. My dog's getting up and moving around. He's in my lap now. I also want to say that this is probably the most I've ever seen the enemy fire torpedoes at me, and I don't appreciate it. Okay. So the countermeasures did help. Okay, so we've got a friend right there being very cheeky because he's kind of sitting pretty still. Okay, so we got a bit of a hit there. Ah, uh, they're responding in kind. 
Gotta lead them a bit further. They're a bit further out than I thought. Nope. <laughs> so, you see how many ships are out there, right? However, oh, well, the fleet's gonna end up taking some losses. I can order them to move, but they're probably already in the locking angle. But again, you don't ever want to do this kind of stuff by yourself. I'm doing this right now strictly for demonstration so that you can see how these things can function. But you absolutely don't want to be doing this kind of stuff yourself because this is what happens. I'm probably going to lose the albatross as well. What the hell? No, I don't want the albatross to follow the seal. And I also would like to have the UI mod back, which I will be using for the the uh, all ground playthrough. Sorry, not sorry. So I'm just going to go out there with the Manta really quickly and try to clear all this stuff up. Um, because these things have Sea Whiz, it doesn't make any sense for me to be firing cruise missiles at them, unfortunately. Um, let's see. So we're going to want the right Sea Whiz more than we want the left. Yeah, they've got us at 60% because they've been hitting us with that 160mm. That, that main gun is no joke. Luckily, they didn't hit our AA, so when the island starts launching stuff at us, we'll have an answer for that. We're going to attempt, attempt, to save this albatross. Go ahead and roll through that real quick. some altitude. Blow these two swordfish out of the water. I kinda had to dodge the sea whiz there. It wasn't too accurate. However, swordfish have a sea whiz blind spot. They either have the sea whiz on the front or the back, which means that if you're coming at them from a particular direction and they fire at you, then you know which direction not to come at them from. And yes, it can be quite that easy. Now the other problem is I have the island here, and I can't fly over the island because it's going to have anti-air. Carrier's still taking damage, but by the fact that the uh, game over screen hasn't pulled up yet, we're still good to go. That's all I need to know, because I won't be facing the enemy carrier for quite some time anyway. Oh, here comes the anti-air. Oh, that's good, they both fired. Oh wow, see who's actually got the rockets there. That usually doesn't happen. Whoa there, frame rate.
Okay. Yeah, now we're gonna lose this albatross to fuel. Did we happen to lose any of our, uh, yep. Lost one of our needlefish. Guess we'll have to figure out which one later. back in formation, and we want to get this manta with all that extra fuel up in the air over the island to keep working on that. And we need to turn off the alarm because, while it doesn't bother me, I'm sure it's going to annoy someone. <laughs> okay. repairs going. So once again, as you can see, uh, rockets kind of ridiculous for taking out naval units. Um, you have quite a few options for doing that. Oh, are we actually going to get this albatross back? Maybe. No. I don't think we are. If it's coming in that directly, but it's still queued, then no. It's gonna come around. Alright, good luck, friend. Nothing else I can do for you now. Alright. So, we'll have the Manta up as our overwatch. But we are going to want to also deploy our virus bots. So, we stick S7 in the water, and I'm gonna go ahead and send one of our multi-roll, so I guess we'll send A1, <laughs> out to handle that. And as long as these other ships don't get too antsy out there. We shouldn't have any problems. But I'm going to do what I normally do for remote ops when nothing goes wrong, uh, and I'm going to send the petrol that I've just deployed out there to handle the rest of the stuff on this island. Because, as far as we know, there aren't any other uh, units out there that are going to cause us any trouble. So let's see, who did we lose? Oh, we lost a gun. Of course we did. Not even one of the guns that's running lower on ammo. No, one of the one of the full guns. Oh what? No. Oh, they fixed formation. We lost a uh, we lost a sea whiz. Wait, did we? No, we. Oh. I do believe that was the albatross. Oh yeah, and there it is. Um, so when it's in the holding pattern, if you lose it, you don't get the notification that it was lost. Ah! So, see how the Manta's freaking out that it's under attack, even though it actually isn't? Uh, that would be because bears have a longer range with those heavy cannons than any other unit and they will take pot shots at air units. We have lost an albatross to a very, very lucky shot before. Um, it was actually kind of impressive. Uh, extremely unlucky for us, but, you know, that's how it goes. So, since we lost that albatross, we're gonna have to launch another one, and we're gonna need to sort of get it to rise in altitude, and for an island like this, I'm going to go ahead and set it to 1,500 meters. And we want to make sure that it's at that higher altitude before it starts patrolling the island here at Storm, looking for targets. 
Now, one of the things that we're going to run into, a problem that we're going to run into pretty shortly, is that there are other navies out there, and this is just going to keep happening because this is something that I didn't exactly plan for. So we're going to lose another unit, and we're going to move the fleet again. These guys have already taken damage from the enemy. The enemy should be going for Milestone and Fear's Edge. Should. So otherwise, they're going to be coming here to us, and that, that music's going to catch us pretty off guard here in just a few moments. Let's see. Yeah, no, you got the clearance. You can handle it. There's our albatross. All right. So... We have to keep in mind that we have some enemy naval vessels off to our north. That's a swordfish. Remember I said that they have two white lights and two navigation lights. And as far as I know, they're tied to that island. They shouldn't get close enough to actually threaten this albatross while it's on its path for surveillance. Which is part of the reason why I launched it. But okay, so we have a needlefish. We have a swordfish. We'd also really like for this albatross to reach its target altitude more quickly, so I'm going to do that because I'm juggling multiple things at once here, and I'm sort of doing that on purpose, again, just to demonstrate. I would, especially if I was by myself, normally take this one island at a time. Alright, so, Petrol's got the airlift successful. So we're going to go ahead and send that in. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to have the petrol deploy the seal there for now before it moves in. Because it's very unlikely, but it can happen. The, uh, <laughs> the IR missiles, when employed by the AI... <laughs> Uh, can and will attempt to fire on the petrol while it's carrying a ground unit. IR missiles should not be able to target uh, air units. Um, in fact, if I have an air unit, if I have an air unit that I'd like to attack, and I've got, say, you know, the petrol that I still haven't modified here with the four IR missiles, and I try to give it an attack order on an air unit, the AI will just cancel the attack order once it it gets into, you know, the proper position to start the attack run. It will not fire. Uh, but when you have a petrol that is mid-airlift with another unit, it will fire. Okay, so I don't know if these guys have any air units. I don't see anything in there. But I also don't want to take too many chances. So the minute I get a clear shot, I'm going to be flinging some 160mm shells in there. Um, I recommend you do that pretty much whenever you get the opportunity. Is that a turret? Is it? Oh, no, that's a bear. Almost looks like a turret for a second. Um, one of the things that you would generally like to do is clear out these hangars before any air units can actually launch out of them. I don't think that this has anything in it. I didn't see anything in the back, and now I'm not seeing anything at the front. So, not too worried. Um, but here's a force shield, and this is what the island facility looks like, and look at all these turrets. We are absolutely going to be deploying ground artillery to take care of these, because that's just the most efficient way to handle all these fixed, you know, stationary units. Um, once again, we are going to be looking for anything that's anti-air, and dealing with that as much as possible with the carrier, and once all the anti-air has been dealt with, then we can start sending in air units to handle the rest. Um, now, it is possible to do a lot of this stuff AI-controlled. Um, you can, you know, repeatedly launch uh, petrols or, uh, you know, razor bills that have the, uh, the different guns on them. These two in particular I've left unchanged because even though I don't use them, they are probably going to be used by the typical player quite a lot. Um, 
and uh, you can see how slow the, the fleet is about moving back into position. And I haven't adjusted their formation at all because I'm no longer really concerned about them. Um, I just want to go ahead and look over all of these. Uh, real quick, um, since I just thought of it, I believe that's a 30 millimeter gun. I... Oh, we're, we lost sight of the 40 millimeter. There we go. Uh, so the walrus in here... The walrus in here should be carrying a 40 millimeter, and then this guy out here is carrying a 15 millimeter. And you can tell that there are three different guns by the fact that there should be three different uh, portraits to the gun. The 40 millimeter should look a bit bigger and fatter than the others. There, there we go. There's a 40 millimeter. Um, now, only the AI can employ 15 millimeter, and I did mention that before. That like, there seems to be some dead zones in the uh, inventory screen for that sort of thing. Uh, okay, so our petrol has arrived and is currently dropping off the virus bots. So now that the petrol is there, and the petrol can act as its own scout, uh, we're going to go ahead and call back the other Manta so that that thing can reload and we can send it out here to deal with these naval units before they become a problem. Because <laughs> they don't like that we have the Albatross out here, and uh, I don't want them getting aggressive. So once again, we've got a snowy island. Uh, that's pretty helpful for trying to look for units during the day, but unfortunately, it's still pretty difficult to do until nighttime. And you absolutely don't want to send in virus bots to an island that you're not 100% sure is clear, unless you're running something like that multi-role petrol that we've got out there, because that uh, you want to be able to take care of any threats at a moment's notice. And a virus bot by itself definitely can't do that. And a petrol carrying four IR missiles means that it can only handle two enemy targets. And if you've let an entire convoy go uh, unscanned and unnoticed, then you're going to be two IR missiles short. I'm actually going to go ahead and just fire the carrier gun at this. Because... oh. Carrier gun's out of range. I am a little surprised. Although, I did have to... stop things here. We'll use the, uh... We'll use the side thrusters. Lock steering. Go ahead and attempt to main that, maintain that heading if you don't mind. And we'll start sort of inching the carrier closer. But for now, the next thing we're going to need to do is we're going to need to start operating that petrol. Uh, because the petrol only has so much fuel, and we may end up needing to call it back before I can actually airlift the uh, virus bots onto the island. Which is a little frustrating, but shouldn't be too much of a problem. So an IR missile, an AA missile, I have a 20mm autocannon, and I have rocket pods. And I'm going to attempt to use only this to take out all of the other units on the island that are going to be a threat. Attempt. Now, as you'll notice, again, the first thing I did was I took out all of the uh, anti-air units. Pretty much because anti-air is the only main threat to uh, any other air unit. The AI has a huge accuracy penalty when firing on air units. So I want to try and come in and just nail as many of these things as I can strictly with what I've got on this thing. might notice the rockets are inheriting my velocity. Every 
time I hear that crack, I'm going to be waiting for my unit to die. Because, as inaccurate as they are, one shot is enough to down my unit. There's that 40 millimeter, and you can tell the difference because of how fast it's firing. Okay, you see how I'm, I'm, I'm aiming directly, but I'm missing? That's because of the inherited velocity. And look, I'm flying right over all these units, you can hear them all firing at me, and nobody's landed a shot yet. That would be because of that huge accuracy penalty that I mentioned. That accuracy penalty is pretty large. But again, if that bear lands a single shot, I'm dead. A petrol can handle a couple of 30 and 40 millimeter shots. Not many, but enough to get the job done. The front here is also very tanky. Okay. run through a little bit more than half our ammo on the chain gun, but we've run through most of our ammo in the rocket pod. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to Petrol here to take out the rest of the ground units. Oh, see, we got a somebody landed a hit. Oh, oh, oh! There's Sea Whiz. And say goodbye to the petrol. See, there was a Sea Whiz turret right about there. And that's why we held off. <laughs> How's the albatross doing? Albatross is doing okay. A little freaked out, but none too worse for wear. We did retrieve the manta successfully. That's good. So we'll send our other multi roll over there to finish the job. I actually appreciate that that happened uh, because it shows. Doesn't matter how good you are, things can go wrong. And our carrier still has not entered. Ah, I see. Gonna need you to turn at some point. And, uh... What we're gonna have to do here... gonna need to come over to the south end of the island and sort of snake our way around it uh, to get back into position. I was kind of hoping that the... Oh, you can get on my cord there, little one. I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to just use the side thrusters for it, but that doesn't seem to be the case. So again, this is where having someone else on the ship with you comes in a lot of handy, and you can also see pretty easily uh, how I'm used to being able to rely on someone else, uh, you know, covering bases that I can't be looking at every two seconds. Now, we've retrieved the Manta, but we can't launch the Manta just yet, because we have to get back into position on the island, and if we're going to be launching, we want to make sure that we are launching in a position where we know the carrier is going to be good to go, and we also want to make sure that anything that launches off the carrier launches into a good position. You don't want to have to reposition 
during or after launch. A launch should be handled first by the carrier, not by the aircraft. If you have poor positioning and you fling your aircraft over an island that you know has anti-air, you're asking to lose it. <laughs> so if I were, you know, launching the Manta at this very moment or, you know, facing the island instead of coming at it broadside, then it's very likely that we lose it. So the, the petrol is going to be coming in here, but the petrol's VTOL, vertical takeoff and landing. Um, so we don't have to worry too much about the petrol running into any problems with the island here. We're going to get closer because we need to bring the carrier gun in range if we're going to start taking out some of the more high priority stuff on the island while we wait on the remote operation with the fleet. So, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to briefly turn off weapons. Alright, so petrol ought to move in on its own. I believe I gave it the correct order for that. We are going to temporarily turn the left side of the carrier towards the island. Temporarily. As we discussed in the last episode, you really don't want to attack like that because you want to make sure that when you start landing your air units if they ha if they end up having to enter the holding pattern for any reason that holding pattern needs to be out over the out over the water and the wide end of the holding pattern is on the left side of your carrier okay so now let's go ahead and re-engage weapons now Bringing the carrier in this close to the island, or any closer... Yeah, they will start trying to fire on you. Uh, and they can lock things... Oh, there we go, see? So another... good bit. If you're going to bring the carrier in close like this... Well, that's just going to be going off for a while now. So, we need to deal with that. <laughs> Look at all those guys out there in the water. So, carrier missile first. Oh, that's an anti-air unit, actually, so that's not going to land. But the problem with using the carrier gun out into... open water like that is that the gun shells do not explode when they hit the water. So I want to be sure that these things are firmly on the beach before I strike them. Now this is generally what I would use the main gun for. Close range self-defense like that. Um, in typical fashion if I've got someone I can work together with, I do not want to be doing that uh, with... I, I don't want to be attacking any targets on the island from a distance with a carrier gun unless I'm using a fleet. Yeah, see, and now the albatross is starting to get low on fuel, so we want to grab its last bit there, bring it way out, and lower the altitude for it. and try and guide it in. <laughs> okay. Alright, alright. We took care of it. So, once again, uh, I'm being very risky. I'm doing this on purpose. You can see we're down to 35%. doing this very slowly and methodically, it wouldn't be very entertaining anyway. We're already up to 44 minutes of footage, so we'll see what I can and can't cut out to uh, hopefully make this go by a little more smoothly.
So there's our allied walrus. And there's our allied fleet. Now we know that there is Sea Whiz right here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna be a bit cheeky about this. I'm going to raise the petrol's altitude to 2,000 meters. And uh, since I already know it's there, but I haven't scanned it yet, we're going to use that to our advantage. Rotary units, when they no longer have orders, will hover at 400 meters. I've ordered this thing up to 2,000 meters, but I haven't given it a weight code. I've done that on purpose. They don't just immediately drop to 400 meters. They sort of drift downward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have this petrol come in on its trajectory, go up to the 2,000 meters, and then as it's lowering down to 400, that gives me plenty of time to use the fleet here to finish off the mission that I currently have, which is going to be finding and eliminating that Sea Whiz turret. Now, unfortunately, I don't have any carrier flares with me, because I'm conducting a remote operation, which means I have to spot this thing in the dark now. We know it's there. The only question is... Oh, see? And this is where the map comes in handy. There he is. Let's see if we get a full scan before he dies. Yep. Hey, hey. Gotta use hard shells on him. Alright. And so, now, our petrol is in position, and as you can see, slowly lowering altitude. And I'm going to go ahead and speed up that process, make sure I keep it level, turn it towards the island. Uh, our next target should be that right there, so... Now, we're going to drop really fast here, but then you're going to see something else that I typically like to do that's kind of risky. The AI is able to fling this, uh, there we go, see, right about 300 meters. Now, the AI is able to fling itself to maximum and minimum throttle a lot more quickly than the player can. So we got a last known position, we know he's right over here, there he goes. Walrus is taken care of. We got three turrets left. Now, we should be able to leave the turret to the north alone uh, as our early warning system and just take out these other two turrets. So to save myself on some of this, actually not, no. It's actually better to save the IR missile, honestly. Just like the rockets, the 20mm ammo will inherit your velocity. So you do have to be a bit careful about aiming and leading your shots. Now, I think something else shot at me that... But it, oh. Well, I am in range for you. Okay. I actually didn't think I'd be close enough. That's alright. So, that means that we will want to... Let's see. roughly like the south end of the target, it looks like. Okay, can do. So, we've cleared out all the units we want to clear out. So we're going to go ahead and start giving the orders for capture from here. Oh, and uh, something else I've noticed. I usually use Charlie and Delta when I'm playing with my captain so that I don't interfere with any of his weight codes. Um, and that is also very much on purpose. What just fired? I didn't do that. I wonder if that was an enemy air unit. 
that just crashed. Ah, no, that was, uh... Oh, okay. Yeah, they're firing IR missiles at us. Once again, no big surprise there. I've actually got a couple units incoming, but since you're the one being cheeky, you're the one who gets the boom. See, the water saved him. Missile walrus? Oh no, you're, you had a gun. Okay. Well, I know how to deal with this. We're gonna go ahead and go like this because we know at the moment they don't appear to have any uh, sea whiz coverage with them. That's gonna help us. <laughs> Let's go over here and make sure that this petrol isn't getting stuck. Uh, just in case you've experienced it before, it is very possible for the petrol to get stuck trying to pick up a ground unit. And, uh, oh. Handled it like a champ. Good. Go ahead and turn off that tracking. And, at this point, we're pretty much done with the fleet. I'm not gonna go through the trouble of trying to bring them in to follow us over to take out the enemy carrier. Uh, that's pretty much as far as we're going to go. And luckily for us, the, car the enemy carrier is still going after these other islands down here, so we know where they'll be at. Uh, what we're going to probably try and do is swing between Judgment and Terminus, and use the open waters down here to uh, ride the current and come at them. Uh, now, I would, again, UI mod, I would be able to set carrier waypoints that I could follow from the helm much more easily instead of having to constantly get up to replot my course. But, uh... No such luck here. So this petrol should, I repeat, should now launch and handle these guys for us quite nicely. Um, just one 160 millimeter shell exploding was enough to bring that walrus down to basically death. So one IR missile should be more than enough. That's handled, and now we've got the other got more units that weren't scanned. One IR missile is not going to be enough to take them out. Luckily, neither of them was a Sea Wiz unit. So let's call him back before he gets hurt. Humans will pack bond with anything, I swear. Let's just wait for the drop off and then, uh. Oh! Oh my! Yeah, see, this is something you want to avoid. Uh, never, never bring your petrol into the trees for a pickup. So we want that thing to go further south on its return trip. Yeah, the carrier's still dealing with threats at the moment. Let's pull you away. Yeah, I can hear all the gunfire going off and everything. I, I know. I know we're in crisis. I know we're low on health. Yeah, see? We're gonna start repairing the helm. these two off the beach. <laughs> Hopefully. Sort of depends on the waves. You go first, actually. Because... Yeah, you see? The water is gonna save him. Look at that. You see how bad that is? For dealing with targets in the water? Not good.
Alright, so our Walrus has completed that. I am actually going to bring the fleet over here because apparently I need more use of the, uh, the carrier gun. Since these things want to get all up close and personal. I'm also being very hard-headed by just leaving the carrier this close, instead of just running away. So just in case, I'm gonna go ahead and save, and if I die, I'm gonna die on camera for being hard-headed. Also perfectly willing to launch and lose that razor bill. That's right. I haven't finished. I haven't uh, re-outfit a one. <laughs> Those right side sea whiz are really, really trucking through. Still functioning despite the damage. Now, technically speaking. The enemy AI should have to reload the same way that we do, um, so that's why the long gaps between IR missiles is not just spamming us with IR missiles. Actually, no, we're gonna we'll have you come out, but we're gonna have you just kind of hang out on station for a moment, and we need to go check on you and make sure that you're okay. Probably not okay. That doesn't sound good. Yep. So, this is why you don't order petrols in. Wow, I'm just getting to demonstrate everything today. So I have been able to free a petrol from this before, but it is not easy. And I highly doubt it's going to work out here. But I'm going to try. strands our virus bots out there for the moment. Uh, but actually, since I launched my friend here, I'll just go send him over to pick that up. This walrus is in a safe spot now, but I ordered the pickup early because I'm in a hurry. And as you can see, once again, that causes problems. I'm also surprised we haven't lost that razor bill if it's still alive. Because... Here, how about I just do it myself? As soon as I figure out where this thing is. Well, I don't know where this thing is because... Okay, so we're out of the woods for the moment. For the moment! So we're gonna prioritize making sure the Sea Wiz is good to go. our multi-roll to go take out that fleet to the north, which we probably should have done a bit sooner.
after that, we are going to want our scout back in the air. So that we can go back to working on this four shield island. I can tell I'm going to be doing a lot of cutting for this, just to save on time, because we have just hit the one hour mark. And uh, I don't like wasting people's time for stuff, so I'll probably be... There'll barely be a lot of jump cuts up to this point. And unfortunately, um, well, I suppose I could... Uh, record a quick separate video to tack onto the front that just says, like, hey, if you want to skip through a bunch of bumbling hard-headedness, uh, then just watch the next video, not this one. But honestly, I'm just the right kind of lazy to not bother. While we have a bit of a, a moment here, I do want to demonstrate something with the petrol. Keep an eye on my speed. Watch what happens. And my altitude. <laughs> this thing, while sort of maintaining altitude, can move very, very quickly if it really wants to. Now, you burn through fuel faster doing this, but if you want some fast attack out of the petrol, it's theoretically possible to move this thing as fast as an albatross goes. Don't let the AI's behavior fool you. Yep, so there's the petrol we lost way back when. Oh no, that was recent. Petrol did we lose? Oh, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Lost him to the tree. Come on now. We got places to be and things to do. I'm not using propulsion. Ah, repair on the other section is done. So let's get this other sea whiz back up and running, and then let's get the AA back up and running. Weapons right side. After that, we're just gonna turn on the uh, hull repairs and keep them on for good till we engage with the enemy carrier. So, our fleet has arrived. That means more Sea Whiz and several more guns because we lost the other missile needlefish. Alright, let's go take out those naval units. One of the things that allows the Manta to operate in this way uh, as its own fast attack, especially uh, against other naval units, is that it has the AWACS. So even if they aren't scanned, uh, the enemy naval units start showing up immediately for me. That helps a lot. <laughs> so I don't have to stop and get scans on them them to show up.
lost the carrier. I guess that's where we end this episode for now. I wonder what got us. Oh, and that's... What did get us? Hmm. Well, yeah, that's where we end the episode for now. And that's why you don't be hard-headed. <laughs> so. And since it's not a campaign, there's no, uh... There's no dialogue here. We're just... We're just done for. So, I'll pick it back up in the next episode here, shortly, uh, after I catch back up and, uh... You know, I can take things more slowly and I don't have to worry about boring anybody. So, I'll be back.